What is the thing a customer has asked you? Story one. I work in an Italian restaurant and this guy was looking at ordering a salad. And when I asked what dressing he wanted, he kept going back to the pasta sauces and asking Sugo. That would be good on it, wouldn't it? I'll get that. And I tried to explain, sir, those are for the pastas. You got the Mediterranean salad. And he responded, you're right. Maybe carbonara. Another sauce. I don't get what he wasn't understanding. He seemed like a normal smart dude, but he just couldn't comprehend the difference between the dressings and sauces. Reminds me of a lady who assumed everything on the menu was some kind of omelet. I'll take the skirt steak omelet. You? That's actually just a skirt steak. Perhaps I could substitute the french fries for eggs? Oh, it's not an omelet? Uh, how about this Greek salad omelet? Ma'am, that's just a Greek salad. The egg dishes are on this side of the menu, and the ones that are omelets say omelet in the description. Eventually, she picked an omelet that she ended up really liking, but another guy at her table sent back his croque monsieur because he thought it would be an omelet. I don't know what made them think we were an omelet restaurant or something. The guy sent back a croque monsieur? Who would do that? They're delicious. Then again, you could put an egg on it, turning it into a croque madame, and call it an omelet. Maybe he would like that. Story two. Oh man, as a former public librarian, I could write a book. Some of my favorites. How do you interpret the VIN on a car? Not a dumb question in and of itself, but she wanted to know if it told the day of the week on which the car was made. She wanted to avoid a car made on a Friday since they would only be thinking of the weekend. Also wanted to avoid Mondays as they'd be hungover. Do you have a K? After several moments of confusion, I figure out that he really was asking me if I had a paper K hanging around. Why did the praying mantis on my porch die? She called four times in one afternoon. Do you have pictures of Apollo? For a school project. Showed her numerous images. She wasn't satisfied. Finally realized she wanted an actual photo. Do I start with photography being a relatively new invention or that Greek gods aren't real? Numerous people asking, how much is this book if I just buy it now? Do they think they're at Barnes & Noble? Weekly, people asking how to make a color copy from a black and white image. It got to the point where I jokingly tell them the little coloring gnomes inside the copier only work on Thursdays. Story 3. I used to be a receptionist at a local branch of UNICEF, the United Nations Children's Emergency Fund. And people would call in at least once a week with a variant of this. Collar. Hi, how can I volunteer with UNICEF in Africa? Me. Well, you need to contact UNICEF International in New York City. We don't actually send volunteers in the field from this office. Caller. Oh, well, I need to go next week or some other unreasonable time limit. How do I do that? Me. I'm pretty sure that the application will take more than a week. They'll need to make sure you have the qualifications they're currently looking for. Caller. Qualifications? Me. Yes, mostly they need professionals in the medical field or teachers with experience working with nonprofit organizations or even sometimes translators or international lawyers, although those two don't usually get sent out of the country they are based in. Caller. I'm unemployed and don't really have any experience in any field, so they can't just send me to Africa next week because I can go now. Or something similar, me. No. That's pretty strange, but also, I have to wonder why those folks wanted to go to Africa right away. Now that's a thread I would like to read. Story 4. For my name. Not the question itself, but the reason why he asked. I was volunteering as cashier at a used bookstore for the library. Not my regular job, but I do it often. In comes this older fella who buys a big stack of books for like 10 bucks. He was really nice and chatty, though he didn't seem completely aware mentally. Not a big deal, I just had to explain sales tax and the book pricing a couple times before he seemed to get it. He pays by credit card and I explain to him how to sign the touch screen for the payment to go through. This is where he asks for my name. I tell him. He takes the iPad and says he really appreciated my service and happily tells me he's going to sign my name for the card so they will know to send the money to me. Before I can say, no, wait, he submitted the signature. I can't see his receipt, but he keeps telling me I was great and to keep the change, so I can assume he was being legit. I honestly wouldn't call it just bizarre. Made me wonder if he's been signing cashier's names the entire time he's had a credit card. Thank goodness the card companies never check those things. Story 5. What's the internet? 
I used to work for an authorized Apple retailer, and one day this old woman, probably in her late 70s or 80s, came in to ask why her phone was acting up. Well, it was a 4GB iPhone 4 and had no storage left. She understandably did not understand her smartphone and when upgrades could be required. I did my best to explain that she would need to upgrade to a device with more storage so it would work the way she wanted and she could keep all of the pictures of her family. All she would have to do is transfer them through the iCloud system over the internet. That's when she asked this question, what's the internet? In that moment, she had tears running down her face as she truly did not understand a thing I explained prior and felt hopeless. I had to take my lunch break, so I handed her off to my store manager to take over. When I clocked back in, she was still in the store, this time at the checkout counter with her brand new iPhone 6S that my manager had sold her to meet a monthly sales quota. And I'm sure he never told her what the internet was. Honestly, I know it's the oldest meme around, but I would have just told her that it's like a series of tubes carrying information. And in fact, I have done that when dealing with old customers interested in buying a computer. Story 6. I work in a sort of outdoor ski shop, so in summer it's obviously slower and they push tents and chairs and general camping hiking gear. We usually gave some chairs on display outside the store as well as extra chairs inside for people to grab. One customer saw a chair, saw the same one inside, came up to us and asked, Do you have any of these in stock? It took us a few seconds to answer because we weren't sure if we heard right and that was apparently too long for her. She stormed out of the shop saying, You people are obviously no good at your job. You should find something else to do with your lives. She even emailed and complained to head office who asked us what happened. We sent in the security footage and now she is banned. She is someone who came in often and didn't spend much. One colleague went up to her once and smiled and asked if she needed any help, so she snapped, Yes, you can help me by leaving me the f alone, and stormed out of the store, leaving my colleague struck. Story 7. I teach karate, and one day a lady comes in who is looking to do a birthday party at her own home but wants to buy some black belts from us for her kid and their families. Now, I would have no problem selling her belts for home use, doesn't mean crap to me, except we don't stock any of that stuff outside of what we need them for tests and promotions and stuff. So I kindly declined and explained to her she could go online and find it on XYZ website if she wanted them, but that most schools won't sell them because of the hard work and dedication and etc. So she points at my belt, which is grimy and gross and ripped apart with all of the work in it, and says, Well, uh, what about yours? Can I just buy that one? Yeah, sure, lady. Let me just give you the thing I've been using every day for the last 10 years. Story 8. I work at a college's IT department. My third day in, this 50 to 60 year old woman tries to convince me to change her username on a different college's website. When I explained I couldn't, she freaked out and yelled until a longtime worker came up and blatantly said, We don't do that. This woman, I've learned, has a complaint to the dean from almost every department on campus. She's not allowed in here three years later. Other notable things she's tried or said that I've had to save my coworkers from? Trying to get a newbie to write her paper for her. Cussed out a coworker for saying that he wouldn't convince her professor not to turn in her paper. Demanded we keep our computer lab open and we need to stay for over two hours past our closing time so she can do her homework. When we said no, she said, I have cancer, you need to do what I ask. When we said no, she cussed us out and refused to leave. We called security and our boss. She punched a security guard. Not only does it feel like she is making up the cancer thing, but even if she isn't, folks, don't make employees stay late at a place for your own wants. I know places like that are there to serve, but respect their time, dang it. Story 9. Bakery. Label printer had an error that for some products the nutrition info wasn't there, so printed out as zero grams, zero calories, zero fat, zero sugar, etc. All zero, all the way. Woman asks if the label is true, starts crying when I say it isn't because she thought she found a new diet food. First up, it's ordinary white bread labeled as such and you think it's zero calories per slice? What the f did we make it out of? Secondly, the weight of the product was zero grams and some other super obvious ones like that. By picking up the product, you should have been fairly clear that it did in fact have mass. I'm not upset that she double checked. I'm amazed that she had convinced herself that it was real in the time it took her to read the label and come talk to the counter. So much that she cried when I let her know it was a label error. Story 10. 
For context, a woman was trying to get fabrics to cover tables, didn't have measures of the tables, and after I explained a lack of size standards, tables come in all sorts of sizes, guys, and a variety of shapes, too. She immediately said the first table was standard size. So we're off to a great start. Finally figure out how much she needs for the first one and cut it for her, then on to the second. I roll some off the bolt and go to straighten it out, only for her to grab the fabric and start moving it. She opens it and asks the width, which I read off the effing bolt, and she pauses. She thinks about this. That's just not big enough. She thinks again. If I cut it, will that make it bigger? It took literally all my willpower to tell her that, unfortunately, no, making it smaller will not make it bigger with a professional tone. Story 11. I got one yesterday at work. Guy calls in furious that his bill is showing he owes $180 for the month. Understandably so. I let him know that the bill is wrong. A supervisor the guy spoke with previously cleared out the payment for the month and May and June and no payment is due until July 6th. He says over and over, he doesn't understand and it doesn't make sense. I phrased it as many ways as I could think of, but he just didn't get it. So he says, talk to my fiance. I was relieved to talk to someone with a brain. I tell her, and she didn't understand either. It was 30 minutes of me resisting banging my head against the desk until it was a bloody pulp. I felt as though I lost massive amounts of brain cells talking to those people. Story time from... Am I still mainly facts guy on this channel, or am I mostly... Uh, Mr. Facts! When I worked for a cable company on multiple occasions, I had customers come in and pay their bills early, and they would do this the day before their bill arrived in the mail. Without fail, I would have someone screaming at me that, I already paid this! Why are you charging me? I would then have to explain that the bills were printed days ago and mailed out, and the mail takes time to get to your house. The number of people who still couldn't understand that was staggering. Story 12. I worked in the seafood department for a large supermarket chain. One day a woman came and asked to buy some frozen shrimp, but from the prepackaged bag. However, she didn't want the entire bag, just half of it, a pound I think. So I was ready to open the bag when she said that she wanted me to remove the weight slash cost of the ice crystals on the shrimp. I just looked at her and asked if she wanted me to wash it off, to which she said no because she wanted it to stay frozen. It probably weighed less than the plastic bag we use. Needless to say, she turned away when I said I'm not able to do that for her. I think that was the most ridiculous interaction I've had with a customer. Story 13. I used to work at Best Buy. At least once a week it would happen that a person would try to return software in anger or confusion. The reason they were either angry or confused was that they were of the belief that if it's on a CD, it should work on a Mac no matter what. I have no idea whatsoever where these people were getting this completely nonsensical idea. They were always shocked if we asked them why they would think this. Like, they had wandered into a Best Buy in an alternate dimension where the sky was purple and you wore sandwiches on your feet. But clearly, wherever they were picking up this horse crap was somewhere with a lot of bandwidth. Story 14. I work at a Starbucks. Three days ago, I had a customer come order and pay for his drinks, and then he asked for the drinks to be heated to 180 degrees. I asked him what that temperature was in Celsius, assuming he measured his temperature in Fahrenheit. Nope. He meant he wanted his drink heated to 180 degrees Celsius, and he emphasized it was possible as he had heated it to that temperature at the two other cafes in the service station, when there are only two cafes in total, and they're both Starbucks. Our coffee machines can only heat to a maximum of 85 degrees before the milk starts boiling over, and at 180 degrees his drink would be a cloud of vapor, but he just wasn't having it at all and insisted I was lying. Uh, sir, allow me to call a 6th grade science teacher so they can explain to you that water boils at 100 degrees Celsius. If that fails, I should have some fuzzy felt cutouts here that should shed some light on this whole thing. I know I'm being a bit of a d but if the guy was insisting and calling someone a liar, then he can take the heat. Story 15. I used to work at a grocery store deli. My coworker, for some reason, got more stupid questions than anyone else. We'd swap stories every shift, but one went a little like this. Hi, what can I get you? The eight-piece chicken. How many pieces are in it? How? 
How many pieces are in the eight-piece chicken? Uh, there are eight pieces in the eight-piece chicken. Okay, I'll have that, please. To be fair, the lady was awfully polite, but how many pieces are in the eight-piece chicken is still a stupid question. And edit. A few people say maybe she meant how many of each piece. No, she meant how many pieces are in the eight-piece chicken. I said eight, packed it up, and she went away happy. Please like and subscribe if you've made it this far. I hope you'll enjoy the rest of the video and have a wonderful day. Story 16. I used to work at a fine jewelry kiosk in a mall. Our jewelry included items like gold bracelets and necklaces bonded with sterling silver, sterling silver rings with cubic zirconia gems, gold engagement rings with diamond chips clustered together rather than one large diamond, etc. I had a lot of regulars, and this one woman would come in often and ask of every item she was interested in, Is this real? I explained what bonded means and how we don't sell diamond rings for $25, but that the rings were indeed certified sterling silver with synthetic gems. I gave her information like this over and over again, day after day, and she would follow up every explanation with, Okay, but is it real? Story 17. I used to work in computer sales and repairs. Had a customer come up who was maybe 23 years old saying she couldn't get her laptop to open something. So I take it and open it and casually ask, what is it you can't get open? She looks at me shocked as I open the laptop screen and tells, I have been trying for hours to get it open. How'd you do that? I look at her not knowing how to respond and close it and open it again. She takes it and walks out saying thank you. I took a long look at my computer I was working on and decided that this was the moment that made me quit that job. I feel like you were on some kind of candid camera prank video or something. That is maybe the only possible reason I can come to. Either that or that woman was high as balls. Story 18. Can't pin it down to one, but a common one from a while back. I worked in IT for a marketing company, which was basically a help desk you could hire to take your calls. We looked after one of the major supermarkets, Club Card, in Ireland and took calls from people with whatever issue they had with the card slash service. When a mail shot was sent out to all Club Card holders, they had to have extra staff to man the phones no matter what. I crap you not. The mail would say, Bank Holiday Weekend Special, double points on all purchases. The phones would be hopping for two days with customers ringing up to find out what the mail shot was about. Story 19. When I worked in housekeeping, I mainly cleaned porches and decks. One day, a woman who looked like she was just itching to talk to my manager comes up to me and says, The grass is wet. This was because the sprinklers were going earlier that morning. So in a polite way, I basically go, so? Then she asks me to dry the grass for her so she wouldn't get her feet wet. If you guys have seen Guardians of the Galaxy 2, she basically wanted me to reenact the scene where the golden lady is walking on the snow and they roll out the carpet. I was so stunned that I just said it was 30 degrees Celsius out, so it would dry in like 30 minutes. Story 20. I used to work in a school library. We would open it for students during lunch and then close the doors and put out a large closed sign when it got full. I mean, a large wheeled easel that the students could read from a ways down the hall and had to walk around as it literally took up half the hallway. Needless to say, students would walk past this sign that says library closed through double closed doors and then try to walk in. My favorite response was, did you read the sign? No. Oh, well, if you can't read, you shouldn't be in the library. Goodbye. Your first mistake was expecting teenagers to pay attention. You don't even need to make a second mistake. That first one is pretty all-encompassing. Story 21. Working at an AT&T store less than two years, I had a minimum of 100 people tell me their iPhone wasn't ringing anymore, and they tried everything, and it ended up being the silent slider on the side. All ages between 12 and 75. How can you spend so much without even knowing its basic features? Some of these people lived in secluded areas and had to drive 45 plus minutes to get there because there were no other AT&T stores near them and only ended up visiting for three seconds. Amazing how some people put so little effort into learning about what they use. Story 22. Why do you not have this item in stock? It's always in stock. Lady, I work for $11.50 an hour here. If I could decide what needed stocking and what didn't, I'd be making a hell of a lot more money than that. Where are all the toys? This was two days before Christmas at a big box store known for its hot dogs and pizza. 
Well, we had toys out for the better part of the month now, and you probably had ample opportunity to buy a toy at the start of December. I guess little Timmy will have to settle for a Mega Bloks set now instead of Lego. Story 23. Where are your anti-Obama washers? I sold appliances for a while at Sears to supplement my teacher income when Obama was still president. Some conservative farmer came in and asked me, where are your anti-Obama washers? I said, excuse me? And he replies with, I don't support Obama, so I don't want any of that energy-saving, water-saving, green crap he's always pushing. I want a real washer. Yeah, he thought anything that was Energy Star qualified was somehow supporting Obama, so he wanted to waste as much water as he could despite him. Story 24. Had a conversation with a woman about picking ink for a printer she got. The conversation kept getting more and more ridiculous, and I realized she never owned or probably even used a printer. Because she asked me this gem. What order do I put the cartridges in if I want to print in yellow? Ma'am, what do you mean? Well, if I put the black cartridge in first, then where do you put the yellow one? Don't I have to take all the other cartridges out and just leave the yellow one in if I want to print in yellow? Oh my god, lady, printers are already just one of the worst devices in the tech world to deal with. They are always screwing up and being a pain in the butt, and yet somehow you've managed to think up a way to make them even worse, and now that is probably going to happen. Story 25. Supplier said we needed two copies of a signed document to go ahead and proceed with the order. One sent to her requesting it and one to an upper-level manager. So instead of me CCing both her and the upper-level manager with the attached signed document, she sent me the same file twice in the email for us to forward one signed copy to her and another to her manager. I replied with the signed document and CC'd her manager so he could read that bit of brilliance. Have you ever interneted this good? Story 26. I work in a bank. Actually, not even a bank. It's an advice center, so no cash or anything like that. Not that anyone reads the signs on the way in. Had a pair of women come in, and one says that the other is visiting from France and needs to check how much is in her account, and can I tell her? I asked if she's a customer of this bank, thinking maybe she's a student learning English and has set up an account because that's quite common, but no. She wanted me to tell her the balance in her French bank account. Story 27. Work at a zoo, and one year they did a big TV advert to highlight Night Zoo since we are open until 9 p.m. during summer. At around noon, a woman asked me, where was the Night Zoo? I said, here, but in six hours. In their defense, maybe they thought it was like a nocturnal building. My local zoo had a building with, like, no light where they housed the nocturnal animals that they called the Night House, so I could definitely see someone thinking it was some sort of new exhibit for night animals. Story 28. Is your chicken noodle soup vegan? Then there was also the guy who ordered four milkshakes, three chocolate, one strawberry. They came in clear cups and were marked clearly on the lid CS for chocolate shake and SS for strawberry shake. He looked at me and asked, which one is the strawberry one? I gave him the benefit of the doubt thinking he may be colorblind. However, the strawberry shake had huge chunks of strawberry in it as well. And again, they were marked. Story 29. I used to work as a bank teller. A lady came up to me and asked to withdraw money. I informed her that she couldn't withdraw money because her account was overdrawn. She was immediately upset, so I had her account checked for fraud. She then explained that all those charges were hers and she wasn't expecting any payments. She was spending money she knew she didn't have. She then asked me why we couldn't just give her more money. We certainly could do that for you, ma'am. Here's a job application, though, uh... When they see how you are with money, well, maybe we're looking for a new janitor. Story 30. I used to work at a literary management company. A woman called and asked why we had never responded to the query she had sent for her novel. Long story short, it turned out she hadn't addressed the envelope. She just wrote the name of our company on the envelope and put it in the mailbox. I explained that for the query to find its way to us, she would need to include our address on the envelope. She asked, has it always been like that? Story 31. I work in a law firm for the family law team. The amount of times I get asked how to remove parental responsibility of the father is unreal. It's not impossible, but very close to. They all give the same reason. I just don't think you should have rights anymore. Yeah, sorry, love, but the court doesn't value your opinion enough to remove the rights of a parent from their own child. I'm astounded that people ask this, let alone being asked this every day. Story 32. I was the client in this situation. 
It was my first time donating plasma, and the nurse was telling me about the process, so she goes, once we take the plasma, we give you back your red blood cells. And I just looked her dead in the eyes and said, well, what am I supposed to do with that? For some reason, I was envisioning them giving me a bag filled with my blood rather than actually putting it back in me. Story 33. I used to work in a call center for a large bank and a customer phoned while he was in one of the branches and said the queue was too big so he wanted me to help him. I asked what his query was and he said the ATM was broke so he had to withdraw cash. I asked how I could possibly help him withdraw cash from the bank over the phone and he said, why can't you just fax it to me? <laughs> oh, I don't know why that one tickled me so much, but it did. 344. I used to work at McDonald's, and when the chicken tenders first came out, my place sold out of them within two or three days. A customer tried ordering them after the fact, and I told her we're sold out until the next delivery comes in. She asked how we're out of chicken tenders in an accusatory tone as if we were hiding them from her. Like, wow, a new item and a limited supply. I wonder how we're sold out. Story 35. I'm in the army. We had a long field event, about a month in the field, no showers, MREs, sweating in the south heat in August. Just a real crappy time. Had a private ask me if we got overtime because we don't get to go home. I told him no, but he thought I was joking. My platoon sergeant blew up on the poor kid when he said he needed to go to finance because he didn't get his overtime. Please leave your story in the comments. I would love to make a video on them in the future. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe.